Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. It's time once again for your weekly wrap up. And this week I want to rant a little bit about USB because we're about to get a bunch of new formats thrown at us. And unfortunately, one port does not rule them all. Let's get to it. Now, what prompted this week's discussion was a product review that I've been working on over the last couple of days, trying to figure out the best way to explain this mess to people. So uh, the other day we got in a couple of these new SanDisk portable SSDs from SanDisk, free of charge and full disclosure. And they have two drives available. One, of course, is their Extreme Portable, and they have the Extreme Portable Pro, which is this drive here. And the difference between the Pro and the regular portable is that this Pro drive supports the USB 3.2 2x2 standard. This is a newer USB standard that allows transfer rates of up to 20 gigabits per second. And if you've got this thing plugged into the right port, you can actually get pretty good speeds out of a USB drive. But most people don't have support for that standard. And then when I started digging into the weeds here, I found out that Many people in the future may not be able to use this drive to its full potential either. So let's dive into what's going on here. Uh, so what's about to happen is we're going to get two new standards running on USB Type-C connectors. So Thunderbolt, which has been running off of USB-C connectors since Thunderbolt 3 came out a couple of years ago, is getting rev to version 4. It'll still use the same connectors. And then USB is introducing their USB 4 format that's going to take some elements of Thunderbolt 3 and integrate them into the USB standard, but it's not going to incorporate things that might be part of Thunderbolt 4. Yet both of these things are going to use the very same ports that you see on screen here. And if you have an older computer, it doesn't get upgraded to the new standard. You're locked in at whatever those standards were when you bought it. But rolling forward, new computers with Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 might be able to take advantage of some of these things. So let's dive into the USB 4 standard here and see what it will incorporate. The good news is that USB 4, like other USB formats before it, is backwards compatible. And you might recognize some of these standards, but they've changed the names. So let's start off here with this uh, SS5 logo. This you've seen before, of course. And we used to know this as USB 3.0 or USB 3.1 Gen 1. Now they're calling it USB 3.2 Gen 1 by 1. It will still have the same logo, and this will run at 5 gigabits per second like USB 3 has been doing now for many, many years. You may also recognize the 10 gigabit logo here, which is what we used to call USB 3.1 Gen 2. Now it's called USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 1. And again, this will run at 10 gigabits per second. And many premium computers have this 10 gigabit per, per second standard built into their USB ports, but you have to check carefully on your computer's case. We'll get into that in a minute uh, to know exactly which ports you have that support the faster speed, because again, the ports all look the same to most consumers. And then we've got the super speed 20 gigabit per second standard, which is what that Pro Drive supports, and it's called USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2. But if you look down here at the bottom, we've got two more things now becoming part of USB 4, which of course is USB 4 20 gigabits per second, also known as USB 4 Gen 2x2, which is different than USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, even though they work at the same speed. And I believe these two uh, lower numbers and logos here are incorporated from the Thunderbolt merger. So USB 4 Gen 3x2 runs at 40 gigabits per second, and is incorporating what Thunderbolt 3 has been using for quite some time. Now, if this list of specifications and name changes is not confusing enough, take a look at what the USB 4 format calls for what is required to be supported versus what is optional on the host device. And of course, the host device in this case would be the computer you're looking at. So if you go out to the store and say, hey, this new computer's got USB 4, awesome, I'm gonna get that and plug all my high-speed devices into it, be sure to read the fine print and the technical specifications of the computer first because what's optional here on the host column? Well, 40 gigabit per second transport is optional. So you may not have a super fast port that you think you're buying and you need to make sure again that your technical specifications specifically say that it supports the 40 gigabit per second transport. 
What also stuck out to me here is that the USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 standard is optional for USB 4 equipped computers. So while you can get the USB 4 20 gigabit per second transport guaranteed on your computer if it is a USB 4 device, the 20 gigabits per second on the 2x2 standard is optional. And I suspect we may not see all that many computers with support for that, which means that down the road, we may not see all that much support for this USB 2x2 standard, given that there's also a USB 4 20 gigabit per second standard that is required. So I would caution people on buying some of these 2x2 devices right now, given that we've got this new standard on the horizon and given that 2x2 support on those new computers that are coming out is not guaranteed. All very confusing. What's also confusing is the fact that many manufacturers are not even labeling ports properly. Uh, so of course we've got uh, two examples here from Apple. Uh, the upper picture is my wife's MacBook Pro and those two USB-C ports are actually Thunderbolt 3 ports. And she has the lower cost one, so those Thunderbolt 3 ports don't actually run as fast as they do on my MacBook Pro. That's a whole other discussion. And then the lower image here is my little 12-inch MacBook, uh, which has a port that looks the same, but is in fact a USB Type-C port only, and is not a Thunderbolt port. So that's confusing on the Apple side. And then even on the PC side, I have found some manufacturers do a fairly good job of labeling their ports. Uh, Lenovo typically does a good job on theirs. This is a new IdeaPad Slim 7 we'll be looking at a little bit later in the week. And you can see here on the right-hand side, it might be a little obscured, uh, but this is a Thunderbolt 3 equipped USB-C port. So that was properly labeled. But their other port here, even though it is a USB-C port, doesn't label what that port is capable of other than they're encouraging you to plug power into it, even though you can plug power into this port or the Thunderbolt port. Uh, but I did look it up and this is a USB uh, three speed port, a five gigabit per second port. Uh, but again, they didn't label it right on there. And I have seen a number of other computers come in. Uh, we saw a bunch of new Dells recently that also don't have their ports labeled. So without looking first at your technical specifications, you may not know what you got, and you might be plugging devices into ports that are not allowing those devices to work at their full potential. Now, understanding what ports your computer has is only part of the battle. You also have to understand the cables that you're plugging into the computer and what those specifications are. And not all of these cables are made to the proper USB-C specs. And here's an example of uh, one cable that was frying expensive Chromebook pixels. You can read more about that on the link you see on screen here. Uh, this will likely continue just because not every manufacturer has to get certified to make USB cables. Another example are some cables that don't support things that you think they might. So here you've got a nice looking USB-C cable. It goes out to USB-A. You might use this for your hard drive or something to get a longer, more durable cable. But check out the fine print here. This cable does not run at USB 3 or USB 3.2 2x2 standards. It only goes at 480 megabits per second. So even though it's got that USB-C connector, it is essentially a USB 2.0 cable. And you wouldn't know that unless you dug into the fine print of the product specifications. Uh, here's one from Anchor, and in this case, they don't list the data transfer rate, but they do mention that it is a USB-C 2.0 cable. So again, this cable will only transfer data at uh, 480 megabits per second tops. So you really got to dig into these things and do your research first. Now, this cable is a little different than the last one we looked at because that last cable did uh, three volts at, or three amps at five volts, right? Good for a smartphone, but it would not do USB-C power delivery, which is a whole different standard. Uh, this anchor cable does support power delivery at, six, at 60 watts. So you can plug it into your laptop, your MacBook Air or something like that and get it to charge at full rate. But if you were looking to use this as a cable to connect to a docking station, again, it's not ideal because it doesn't support uh, the faster USB data transfer rates, nor does it appear to support video output either. So you got to be, again, really careful here as to what you buy. Uh, here's another cable. This one looks a little better for docking stations, USB-C to USB-C. It'll support 4K video, 100 watts of power delivery. You can deliver even more power than that anchor cable we were just looking at but it is limited to five gigabits per second of data transfer, USB-C 3.1 Gen 1, 
which is no longer called that. Now it's 3.2 gen 1 by 2 or 2 by 1 or whatever. Uh, so just again, make sure you do all of your research. Thankfully here they tell you exactly what the data rate is, which is nice to see. So at least you know what you're getting if you take the time to look. And then I found this cable, which might be the one I would get. Uh, here we've got 100 watts of power delivery, nice long length. 3.1 Gen 2, which is now also 3.2 2 by 1, so 10 gigabits per second. And this one looks like the total package. But again, you don't know if this is USB certified or not. And that's a lot of power to push through a cable that isn't certified. So again, just be very careful with where, what you're buying. And when you do buy, dig into those specifications to take a look. I found over the years that the anchor cables have worked very well for me. They're pretty well reviewed. They do tend to put a little bit more effort into making sure their cables meet the specifications. Cable Matters I found works pretty well. I've bought Amazon Basics before and haven't had issues, but I'd be really careful about brands that you haven't heard of before, especially when you're pushing this much power over them. And on a personal note, now that we're about five or six years into the standard, I've got a mess on my hands. I've got these USB-C cables all over the place. They all support different data rates and different alternate mode standards. Some support video, some don't. Some support power delivery, others don't. Some run at USB 3.0 speeds, others run at 3.2 Gen 2 speeds. It's a mess, and I don't know what cable supports what unless I actually put a little label around it so that I can know what it is the next time I pick it up. And I'm going to have to spend the winter now just organizing my cables because they all look the same, but they all have very different capabilities, and it's just a mess. Uh, and that's something I have to work out here on my own. Uh, let's dive into briefly Thunderbolt 4 and see what's on the horizon there. Intel is responsible for Thunderbolt 4, and they are going to continue using the USB Type-C connector, but they're going to have different features. And what they're trying to do is make things simpler for consumers uh, by saying that if you have a computer with a Thunderbolt 4 port, it'll support all of this stuff. Although, uh, this here, the 2x2 standard, might be optional. I'll get to that in a second. The one thing, though, that bugs me is that the Thunderbolt 4 logo looks the same as the Thunderbolt 3 logo. And I can tell you in testing this USB 2x2 drive that none of my Thunderbolt 3 computers could use this at 20 gigabits per second. So I wish they did something to differentiate this logo on version 4 from 3. And who knows, maybe we'll see some manufacturers do that. Otherwise, you're going to have to dive into your computer specifications to be certain about that. Uh, they do say, though, that the Thunderbolt 4 cable, uh, to my last point about cable organization, uh, should support all of the USB modes and all of the Thunderbolt modes that are out there. So it might make sense to buy some Thunderbolt cables and you'll know everything will just work. But of course, these cables cost a lot more than their USB equivalents. But if you have problems like I do, maybe it's worth it just to save yourself the time of organization. Now, Intel did put together a helpful chart here to better understand what the requirements are for Thunderbolt 4 at a minimum. And a few things stand out here. The first is that its minimum is its maximum. It has to support 40 gigabits per second in order for it to be Thunderbolt 4 compliant. And USB 4, of course, can run at half that speed and still be a compliant USB 4 device. Another point of note here is that a Thunderbolt 4 equipped PC has to support at least two 4K displays out of its port, uh, whereas USB 4 only requires one display with no resolution minimum. Uh, but the thing that stands out for me here is the fact that the uh, USB 3.2 minimum is still only 10 gigabits per second here. So if we were to take out a USB 2x2 two two device, which should run at 20 gigabits per second, it's not required to be fully supported on Thunderbolt 4. Although if this was USB 420 compliant, it would work fine. And again, that's where the confusion points are definitely going to be uh, on this new SanDisk product for sure. And you can see some of the other items here that Thunderbolt 4 is supporting that some of the other standards do not. So the bottom line here is that if you were hoping for the big merger of everything and to have that port just work the same on every computer you buy moving forward, it's not going to happen. We're still going to have a lot of ambiguities here, a lot of different types of cables, a lot of different types of devices, and a lot of consumer confusion to come. And unfortunately, that's just going to be our reality here because we have one port to rule them all. But there are some cool things that I'm looking forward to on Thunderbolt 4. Uh, this is a doc that Otherworld Computing sent me a press release about the other day. 
And what's neat is now you're going to be able to use Thunderbolt kind of like you would USB and that you can buy a one-to-many dock. Now granted, they're all sharing the same 40 gigabits per second of bandwidth, but you could have multiple Thunderbolt devices here plugged into this dock through a single port. And this is the kind of stuff that I'm looking forward to with the new Thunderbolt 4 standard. So it looks like for me at least I'll have continued job security as I'll have to keep explaining this stuff to consumers. But it was a very challenging review here to put this together because I was confused. And if I do this for a living and get confused, I can't even imagine what consumers out there are going to be facing as we get more and more different types of USB standards hoisted upon us over the next couple of years. So buckle up. We'll be talking about this a lot more in the future. Now, this week's wrap-up is being brought to you by all of you. We had two super chatters this week during our live streams. Uh, they included Grayson Petty and Toys Are For Boys. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, we also have new supporters here on the channel who made uh, membership contributions. We have I'm the One Who Knocks and Mark Roberts, who contributed via the YouTube membership program. Pete Silva signed up via Patreon. And we also have Alberto Farfan and Mark Smith, who contributed via DonorBox. We also uh, just went on float plane this week and five people signed up on there, but unfortunately I don't have your names yet. So as soon as I'm able to get access to subscriber data, I'll be happy to give you a shout out as well. I wanna thank everyone for their support this week and everyone who's been contributing on an ongoing basis and all of you who watch on a regular basis too, because all of those things equal channel growth. And if you want to support the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv support and make a monthly or a one-time contribution. You can also become a member through the YouTube membership program just by clicking the join button down below. And of course, we're now on Floatplane 2. So let's take a look at the week in review. Uh, we had two live streams involving those SanDisk portable SSDs because I did one stream, the hour-long one there, uh, doing some initial testing. And another thing that I noticed in the course of testing the drives was that uh, the, the Thunderbolt 3 port on my gaming laptop uh, is not as fast as for USB devices as my gaming PC is upstairs. And I went and ran the tests again on the computer, got different numbers, and then I came down and shot the review, which was the two hour and 39 minute live stream there. And you'll see me really struggling as to how to explain this two by two standard to people. And I still have some things I might amend on that video before it gets uploaded uh, to better explain how USB 4 is not a guarantee that this drive is going to work properly. It's just a mess and we'll have to explain it to folks. It's not SanDisk's fault per se. I mean, they're trying to get the best performance they can out of it, but I think they would have been better off making this a Thunderbolt drive and differentiating it that way from the USB one. But it is what it is, as they say. Uh, we also had a fun one. It was almost a four hour live stream. Uh, putting together the RetroFlag NestPy case that we reviewed this week. And one of the fun things about the live streams is that you're able to see the struggles that I go through putting content together because you have to keep in mind like what's going to keep the viewer's attention, how to understand um, what the viewers will be looking for, uh, understanding that most of my viewers are casual tech users and not uh, super techies. So we struggled with, with a lot of that this week on the live streams, and it's fun to see that. And I have to say it was very helpful having people in the chat uh, giving feedback in real time. And I think that's been helping my reviews get better because I'm able to make adjustments before it gets uploaded. And I really appreciate everyone who gave so much of their time uh, to help out with the channel this week. On the Extras channel, we had a bunch of unboxings. It's so much easier and faster for me to upload now, so I'm more motivated to get stuff up quicker. So we unboxed the Pixel 5, the new phone from Google. We're gonna have a review of that coming up soon. I've got it uh, right here. I can't show you more than this yet because I'm under embargo, but this is what it looks like, a very nice, attractive phone uh, that I am excited to dig into a little bit. Uh, we unboxed a new Minus Forum mini PC with a Thunderbolt 3 port. Uh, we also took a look at the Lenovo IdeaPad Slim 7 that we're reviewing this week, and then we unboxed the Google TV that we reviewed here on the main channel, along with that Nest Pi case. So we consolidated that four-hour live stream to 22 minutes. How about that? Uh, and then, of course, we looked at the Lenovo ThinkPad L14, which is the entry point into the ThinkPad line. So all sorts of good stuff this week you can check out in the master playlist down below. Now this week, I've got a lot of stuff going on. We're gonna be doing some live streaming for Prime Day. I got in an Acer laptop that's on sale for Prime Day, so we're gonna set it up and test it while Prime Day is going on so you can get the deal. And we'll have some other stuff I'm sure we'll be doing, so set your notifications. And what I would love for you to do is go to my Amazon page that you can see on screen there 
and follow me there because when I live stream on YouTube, I'm also simulcasting on Amazon's shopping channel and that's a great way to help the channel too. So if you don't mind, just do a follow there and you'll get notified in both places. We're gonna have a review of the SanDisk drives for sure, so be on the lookout for that. I might get to the Apple Watch this week and Shadow, but there's some more stuff coming out. I'm expecting to get the Oculus Quest 2 in the next day or two, and I'm also getting in that new uh, Microsoft Surface Go laptop that I know some of you were interested in too. So whatever comes in, I'm just gonna get to it and we'll see what happens. This is the busy season where all the new stuff comes out, so I am working really hard to get as much of the uh, name brand stuff that's heavily out there up quickly, so be on the lookout. Lots of stuff to come. And if you want to get notified anytime we do anything on this channel, you can click the bell, and when we go live or upload a video, you will get a notification pushed down to you via your mobile app or email or whatever your preferences are. Uh, we also, of course, have other channels. That includes the Amazon shop I just talked about, so follow me on there. And we're also now on Floatplane, so if you happen to be watching videos there, I am now part of that uh, platform as well, again, because it's so quick and easy for me now to upload to many places. My upload speeds have gone from an hour to a minute, and I am loving it. You can check out last week's wrap-up for a full review of my fancy new internet connection. We have some great ways to engage with the channel, including my email list at lon.tv slash email. That is a very infrequent thing. We have a very active Facebook group you can find at lon.tv slash Facebook group. And we've got the store at lon.tv slash store where I sell previously used items that we reviewed here on the channel. And I've got a pile of stuff here that I'm gonna be getting rid of soon, including the iPad we reviewed a few weeks ago. I've got the Oculus Quest 1 that I'll probably be selling now that the new one is coming in. Uh, so be on the lookout. We're gonna have a bunch of stuff coming up on the store. And if you want to be notified uh, when we do list items on the store, you can go to lon.tv slash store alert and you'll get pushed down a notification via email, the old fashioned way, anytime we add something to the store or change anything significant. So be sure to sign up for that. And that is going to do it for this week's weekly wrap up. Again, a lot of stuff on the horizon. I'm gonna be super busy over the next couple of weeks getting all this stuff reviewed and unboxed and everything. So stay tuned. Thank you all for your continued support and viewership. I will see you on the next video. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.